Timberland, aka Timothy Zachary Mosley, was born in Norfolk, Virginia in March of 1972. Tim took an interest in music early and always knew that a career in it was his calling in life. He never thought about becoming rich from it. Tim just wanted to show the world his talent and that he did. When Tim was a teenager, this dream could have been cut short due to him getting shot accidentally while working at Red Lobster. This guy was going to fight one of my friends and he brought a gun. He pulls it out and shows me and it went off and it shot me, grazed my neck. It went in from an angle and I flinched. I couldn't feel my arm. My arm went dead. It hit the nerve, just boom, just dead, you know? Thinking back now, it's just like, wow. You know, it was just like, boom. It was just like that. As a result of this, Tim had to undergo physical therapy with his right arm being paralyzed for almost two years. There are reports that he still has the bullet lodged in him. During his time, Tim was not concerned about dying. His biggest concern was that his paralyzed hand was the hand he used to scratch turntables with since he was a DJ at the time. Back in the day, he was known as DJ Timmy Tim. Through time and physical therapy, his arm got better, but what happened to him did not stop his drive to DJ and make music. While DJing, Tim did not like the beats that he heard from other people, so he decided that he was gonna start making beats on his own. DJ Kid Capri was a big inspiration for him during this time with him describing his mixtapes as being game changers. Before getting more into the video though, I would quickly like to plug that I made a TikTok that you guys should definitely go out and follow. I'll be posting content on there. I'm definitely trying to get that popping, so definitely go out and support that. And if you haven't already done it yet, go follow my Instagram too. That would be greatly appreciated. You guys can always reach out and just show me some love. It's all good. Leave down in the comments some of your favorite songs that Timbaland has produced and or performed on. But back to the story though. For high school, Timbaland attended Salem High School in Virginia Beach. This is when he met his soon-to-be partner in music, Magoo. The two met through Larry Live, who told Magoo about Tim's DJ skills. Upon seeing these skills in person, Magoo was impressed and thought that Tim was way better than advertised. Timbaland eventually introduced Magoo and Larry Live to his cousin, who we all know today as Pharrell. I've already documented the story of Pharrell and the Neptunes, so if you're interested in that, I have a two-part series on that, which I'll put a link in the description for you guys to enjoy. In the first video, I talk about how Pharrell, aka Magnum at the time, was in a group called SBI, aka Surrounded by Idiots, with Timbaland in the early 90s. Larry Live and Magoo were in the group as well. In 2011, early recordings from the group emerged online. One of these songs was It's Like That. The A Tribe Called Quest influence is very noticeable in this track. Fans of Pharrell would already know how much he was and still is inspired by the group. Looking back on it now, it's really insane when you think about the amount of talent that came out from Virginia around this time. I mean, back in the day, you had what went on to be the Neptunes, Timberland and Magoo, the Clips, Missy Elliott, etc. Speaking of Missy Elliott, Tim met her through a mutual friend. When they met, she was in a group called Faye Z, which later went on to be known as as Sista, a then unknown Timbaland produced for the group. She was the one that said, yo, you have a gift. Your sound is unique when I thought my sound was trash, but she thought it was unique and she pushed me to go super hard. And that's when I knew that I wanted to be a producer. Sista ended up being signed to Swing Mob, which was founded by Devante Swing of the legendary R&B group Jodeci. Magoo once spoke about how Timbaland got involved with Swing Mob, aka The Basement. Missy's group went to a Jodeci show and they got on. When they got on, they told Devante Swing specifically about Tim because he was the producer of the group. Devante didn't really want to deal with it. He thought Tim was talented, but he was going to use Albie Shore. Missy was like, nah, my man has to do work on this too. Missy has always been a rock and she's been the toughest business person I've ever met. 
She will tell you that won't work and it literally won't work. She knew Tim would work for what she was doing. She was like, I love Al, but Tim fits what I want to do. She saw the future for what Tim's production could do. I have to give Devontae credit because he actually listened. Tim Beland started working with Devontae in 1992. He was a struggling producer, but eventually he started getting money through producing for people like Jodeci on their sophomore album and Usher to name a few. With this money, Tim really wanted to buy a Mazda RX-7, which his mother was not pleased with. She told him to not get that car, but Tim simply did not listen. Buying this car turned out to be a huge mistake and was a mistake that almost cost him his life. While driving the car, Timbaland hit a patch of black ice. He describes the crash as the vehicle wrapping around a tree like a candy cane. Unfortunately, this accident killed the female passenger in the car. This is something that Timbaland still struggles with today. It's really crazy how two accidents to this point could have changed the music industry forever if they cost Timbaland his life. Back to Missy Elliott and Timbaland co-produced Sista's debut album alongside Devontae Swing. Fun fact, Devontae is the one who gave Tim the nickname of Timbaland. His name is an obvious reference to the Timberland boot. One day, Tim mispronounced the company as Timberland instead of Timberland. This is how he ultimately got his name. In September of 1994, Sister released their single Brand New, which Timberland co-produced. Timberland learned a lot from his time working under Devante, but unfortunately, Sister's debut album got shelved. Missy Elliott says that she was the first one to leave the basement, as described in her episode of Behind the Music. Devante Swing was known to be very controlling and manipulative. There was a contract dispute as well, which reportedly turned out very bad. The very next day after the contract dispute went awry, Missy Elliott went back home and Sista ultimately dissolved. Timberland left not that long after this and soon got a call from Atlantic Records to work with Aaliyah. R. Kelly produced her first album, AJ Nothing But A Number, in 1994. With her sophomore album, Timbaland was chosen. He ultimately ended up producing a little over half of her sophomore album, One In A Million, which released in August of 1996. One of, if not the biggest songs to come from this album was the self-titled track, which Timbaland produced. This song really changed the game with its sound, which was inspired by Timbaland's time working under the basement. The song One in a Million never charted on the Billboard Hot 100 due to a technicality. For some time in the 90s, Billboard did not allow songs not released as physical singles to chart on the Billboard Hot 100. This resulted in songs like Four Page Letter and One in a Million to not chart due to this rule. However, Timbaland produced another single for the album, which was If Your Girl Only Knew. This song peaked at number 11 on the Billboard Hot 100. Ultimately, the album One in a Million peaked at number 20 on the Billboard 200 chart, selling 450,000 copies in its first week. In July of 1996, Genuine's song Pony released as a single. The song peaked at number 6 on the Billboard Hot 100. Though the song released officially in 1996, the song was several years old at that point. To quote Timbaland, he said that the song was about 9 years old before it released. Pony turned out to be a huge success, scoring Timbaland his first top 10 hit on the Billboard Hot 100. Timberland produced Genuine's debut album, Genuine The Bachelor, which released in October of 1996. The album peaked at number 26 on the Billboard 200. As of 1999, the album is double platinum. In 1997, Tim got the opportunity to work with Missy Elliott again. This time around, she was a solo act instead of being with the group. The two worked on her debut album, which Timbaland executive produced for. In May of 1997, Missy Elliott released her debut solo single, The Rain, Super Duper Fly. 
me, I'm super fly. Super duper fly. Super duper fly. Such a classic song, but the music video is what everyone remembers. Missy was really a pioneer, and she followed up the Rain Super Duper Fly with Sakatumi. This was the most successful single from her debut album, with the song peaking at number 12 on the Billboard Hot 100. In July of 1997, Missy Elliott released her debut album, Super Duper Fly. The album launched her into stardom and peaked at number 3 on the Billboard 200 with 129,000 copies sold in its first week. The album went platinum later that year. Later on in 1997, Timbaland and Magoo released their debut album, Welcome to Our World, through Blackground and Atlantic Records. The album was led by the single Up Jumps the Boogie, which peaked at number 12 on the Billboard Hot 100. After this, 1998 came around, and this was Tim's busiest year to this point as far as production. He produced for people like Escape, Aaliyah, Janet Jackson, Total, Playa, Boys to Men, Jay-Z, etc. Starting out the year, Timbaland largely produced Playa's debut album, Cheers to You. Unfortunately, the album did not do so hot, with it peaking at number 86 on the Billboard 200. In the summer, Aaliyah's song, Are You That Somebody, appeared on the soundtrack for the movie Dr. Doolittle. Timbaland produced and co-wrote the song. The song peaked at number 21 on the Billboard Hot 100. Later that year, Tim produced on Jay-Z's 1998 album, Volume 2, Hard Knock Life. Tim produced the songs Paper Chase and Jigga What, Jigga Who. Jigga What, Jigga Who ended up being pushed as a single for the album. The song peaked at number 84 on the Billboard Hot 100. This would not be Timbaland's last time working with Jay-Z, as we'll see. Before that happened though, Timbaland released what's regarded as his debut album with Tim's bio, Life from the Basement. This released in October of 1998. I said regarded as because this project is technically a compilation of tracks produced and performed by Timbaland. The project showcases members from the basement and or the super friends. Artists such as Genuine, Missy Elliott, Aaliyah, Magoo, Static Major, etc. The album was led by the single Here We Come, which peaked at number 92 on the Billboard Hot 100. Tim's bio, Life from the Basement, ended up peaking at number 41 on the Billboard 200. At the beginning of 1999, Genuine's sophomore album was released. His album, 100% Genuine, released in March of that year. Tim produced almost all of the 16 tracks on the album, excluding a few. The big song from this album is So Anxious. This song peaked at number 16 on the Billboard Hot 100. Genuine was really hesitant about the song before its release. He felt that the song So Anxious was too slow and he was singing really hard. If it wasn't for his management at the time, then we might have never gotten the song. His second album peaked at number 5 on the Billboard 200. As of 2000, this album is also double platinum. A couple months after the release of 100% Genuine came the release of Missy Elliott's sophomore album, The Real World. Just like her debut album, this album was produced by Timbaland and released in June of 1999. It peaked at number 10 on the Billboard 200 chart. The album ultimately went platinum in 2000. The Real World was led by the single She's a B. The song peaked at number 90 on the Billboard Hot 100. The second single All In My Grill ended up peaking at number 64 on the Billboard Hot 100 while the third single High Boys peaked at number 5 on the Billboard Hot 100. Later in 1995, Timbaland produced multiple songs for Jay-Z's fourth album, Volume 3, Life and Times of S. Carter, which was released in December of 1999. Perhaps the biggest song he produced for the album is Big Pimpin'. The song peaked at number 18 on the Billboard Hot 100. The song is triple platinum as of 2023. Big Pimpin', we Despite Big Pimpin's success, the song has received a ton of controversy. 
One of the controversies behind the song was the copyright infringement case over the sample of the song. Ultimately, in 2015, the case was dismissed. 2000 came around and Timbaland produced for artists such as The Brat, Snoop Dogg, Memphis Bleak, Casey and JoJo, etc. Some of the big records he did this year were Ride or Die Chick by The Locks, Is That Your Chick, The Lost Verses by Memphis Bleak, and What's My Name Part 2 by Snoop Dogg. However, the biggest song he produced this year was Try Again for Aaliyah. This was for the soundtrack of the 2000 movie Romeo Must Die. Try Again ended up topping the Billboard Hot 100 charts and was Timbaland's first number one song. In 2023, Timbaland revealed that he made the beat for Try Again by accident. I was playing with this keyboard, and it was a mistake, and my engineer, Jim Douglas, caught it. I said, Jimmy, did you catch that little rhythm? And he said, I sure did. So after he caught it and played it back, I put the beat on. I said, ooh, chop it right here, and he chopped it right there. Timbaland was really starting to catch fire, and he continued that momentum into the 2000s. Everything seemed to be going great until his world got flipped upside down once again. Starting out 2001, Timbaland only produced a few songs on Genuine's third album, The Life, which was released in April of 2001. Despite the lack of Tim's presence on the album, it still performed well. The next month, Missy Elliott released her third album, Miss E So Addictive. This album peaked at number two on the Billboard 200, selling 250,000 copies in its first week. Tim produced almost every track on the album except for the intro. This album was led by the single Get Your Freak On. The song peaked at number seven on the Billboard Hot 100. The song went double platinum in 2023. Get Your Freak On almost did not happen. Timbaland was very close to losing the beat for the song. According to Missy, Timbaland felt like Missy's album was already done while Missy felt like something was missing. Timbaland ended up showing her more beats to potentially make a song to. But Tim speedily did this to the point where he glossed over the beat. Missy heard what went on to become Get Your Freak On and she was intrigued by its unusual sound. If she never made the decision to add another record to her third album, we possibly would have never gotten Get Your Freak On. The song Raised Up by P.D. Pablo was released as a single the same month that Missy's album was released. Raised Up peaked at number 25 on the Billboard Hot 100. Later on in 2001, Timbaland sampled Get Your Freak On for Bubba Sparks' song Ugly. The song Ugly peaked at number 15 on the Billboard Hot 100. Timbaland produced 7 out of the 18 tracks for his debut album, Dark Days, Bright Nights. The album peaked at number 3 on the Billboard 200, selling 132,000 copies in its first week. Bubba was an artist on Tim's label, then named Beat Club Records, which was under Interscope Records. He was set to be a big artist on the label, but his career did not turn out how people thought that it would. In the summer of 2001, Aaliyah released her third album, Self-Titled. The album topped the Billboard 200 charts. The self-titled album was led by the single, We Need a Resolution, which peaked at number 59 on the Billboard Hot 100. <laughs> Timbaland also produced More Than A Woman from this album as well. That song peaked at number 25 on the Billboard Hot 100. The only other song that he produced on the album was I Care For You, which peaked at number 16 on the Billboard Hot 100. Sally, Aaliyah passed away due to a plane crash a little over a month after the album. This really shook up Timbaland, not only because he lost a dear friend and a frequent collaborator, but he was supposed to be on that ill-fated plane ride. This is something that Timbaland has said. We do know that before Aaliyah's death, her and Tim were not on the best terms, so you can take Tim saying this as you will. People wondered outside of Missy, who would Tim have that kind of synergy with? 
Just a couple months after Aaliyah's death, Timberland and Magoo released their sophomore album, Indecent Proposal. It did slightly better than their debut album with Indecent Proposal peaking at number 29 on the Billboard 200 chart. Without a doubt, the biggest song that came from this album is Drop. If you have seen the 2004 movie You Got Served, then you definitely heard the song before. At the beginning of 2002, Tweet released the album Southern Hummingbird. The album was led by the single Oops Oh My. The song peaked at number 7 on the Billboard Hot 100. Timberland also produced the song Call Me for Tweet as well, which peaked at number 31 on the Billboard Hot 100. November of 2002 ended up being a huge month for Timberland because he was all over the charts for this month. This was due to Missy Elliott, Justin Timberlake, and Jay-Z all dropping albums that month. Justin Timberlake was the first with the drop of his debut album, Justified. He had recently gone solo from NSYNC earlier in 2002. The two met during the making of the album and instantly found a connection. Timberland produced alongside Scott Storch for the album. If you have not seen my recent video on Scott Storch, you're definitely sleeping. One of the best videos I've ever done without a doubt. His life story is insane and the video is one hell of a watch. I'll put a link in the description for you guys to enjoy. The second single for Justin's debut album was Cry Me A River. The song peaked at number 3 on the Billboard Hot 100. As of today, the song is double platinum. There ended up being problems between Scott Storch and Timbaland over the credits of the song. I documented this in my Scott Storch video and even covered the hilarious diss song that Scott made against him. Like I said, go check that out if you want to learn more. A week after Justified was released, both Missy and Jay-Z dropped their respective albums. Jay-Z released his seventh album, The Blueprint 2, The Gift and the Curse. Tim produced three tracks from the album, with the most notable one being The Bounce. Missy released her fourth album with Under Construction. Once again, the album was largely produced by Timbaland, excluding a few tracks. Under Construction peaked at number 3 on the Billboard 200, selling 259,000 copies in its first week. The album went double platinum in 2003. Under Construction was led by the single Work It. The song peaked at number 2 on the Billboard Hot 100. The song is triple platinum as of 2023. The other successful single from this album was Gossip Folks, which peaked at number 8 on the Billboard Hot 100. 2003 turned out to not be a good year for Timbaland. The projects he did this year did not do so hot. Timbaland and Magoo released their third and last album, Under Construction Part 2, which failed to make any impact. People believe that Bubba Sparks' sophomore album was way ahead of its time, but unfortunately, it did not do so hot when it released. The year previous, in 2002, Miss Jade's debut album did not even crack the top 50 of the Billboard 200 charts. Miss Jade and Bubba Sparks were on Beat Club Records. Even worse for Tim was that in 2003, his Beat Club record label was dropped by Interscope Records. This heavily weighed on him because he felt like none of his music was hitting the mark. Timbaland still managed to primarily produce Missy Elliott's fifth album, This Is Not A Test Though. The album peaked at number 13 on the Billboard 200, selling 138,600 copies in its first week. This was seen as Missy Elliott's weakest album to this point by critics. But all wasn't bad for Tim in 2003 because he still managed to score some hits. The Jump Off by Lil' Kim was one of them, with the song peaking at number 17 on the Billboard Hot 100. The smash hit happened to be the Jay-Z song, Dirt Off Your Shoulder, which appeared on Jay-Z's quote-unquote retirement album at the time, The Black Album. Timbaland appears in the 2004 movie, Fade to Black, where you can see him produce the song for Jay-Z. Very memorable part of the movie due to Jay-Z's epic reaction to the amazing beat. Dirt Off Your Shoulder peaked at number 5 on the Billboard Hot 100. It also went double platinum in 2021. 
during Tim's session with Jay-Z. In the movie, he played a couple beats that ended up going to other artists. Those beats ended up becoming Brandy's song, Come As You Are, and Ludacris' song, The Potion. These songs were released in 2004 on their respective albums. Timbaland was the primary producer for Brandy's 2004 album, Aphrodisiac. This album peaked at number 3 on the Billboard 200, selling around 132,000 copies in its first week. Hit-wise, 2004 was a very down year for Timbaland. The only notable hit that he had in 2004 was LL Cool J's song, Headsprung. This song peaked at number 16 on the Billboard Hot 100. 2005 would arguably be a worse year for Timbaland because he had little to no hits. The two most notable songs that he produced this year were Put You On The Game, For The Game, and Wait A Minute by The Pussycat Dolls. While the song Put You On The Game did not chart on the Billboard Hot 100, the beat for that song is insane, I had to mention it. One of my favorite beats that Timbaland has ever done. This is in, produced by Timbo. Game over. Nah, the NWA chain choke is Wait a minute was the biggest song that Tim commercially had this year with it peaking at number 28 on the Billboard Hot 100. 2005 was also the year that Missy Elliott released her sixth album, The Cookbook. Unlike her first five albums, Timberland was not the primary producer for it. He only did production on two songs out of the 16. When Missy Elliott was questioned about it, she said that both of them came to a spot where they did not know where to go musically with her sixth album. Though Tim only produced two tracks, he was still very involved with the making of the entire album according to Missy. What's also true is that Tim was in a deep depression around this time. 2004 and 2005 were rough years for him. His songs not hitting and being played on the radio deeply affected him. Timbaland once said that his weight almost got up to 400 pounds. He was in very bad shape and once thought about ending his own life. It got that bad for him. Through this dark period, Timbaland dedicated himself to getting healthy. He worked with some of the top trainers in the world to help him lose weight and live a cleaner lifestyle. It was almost as if every pound he lost, the more confidence he gained. The pounds kept coming off and Tim came back with a vengeance in 2006. In the summer of 2006, Nelly Furtado dropped her third album, Loose. This album was under Geffen and Mosley Music Group, which Timbaland started that year. Nelly had known Tim for years at this point and worked with each other in the past. Jimmy Iovine of Interscope Records really wanted Nelly to work with Tim again, so they locked in together in Miami for about six weeks. This six weeks led to one of the best-selling albums of 2006. Timbaland primarily produced the album with Loose topping the Billboard 200 chart, selling 219,000 copies in its first week. It went quadruple platinum in 2022. The second single for the album would be monstrous, and it would become the classic song Promiscuous. This song topped the Billboard Hot 100 for six weeks. Since its release, the song has gone seven times platinum. Nelly was really nervous about the release of the song. Promiscuous was very different from her previous hit songs like I'm Like a Bird. But Nelly was up for a challenge and it ended up becoming a major success. Maneater was another single from the album and this peaked at number 16 on the Billboard Hot 100. It's now double platinum. The last hit single for Loose was the song Say It Right. Just like Promiscuous, the song topped the Billboard Hot 100, but this time it was only for one week instead of six. Say It Right is now quadruple platinum. <laughs> I do want to take a moment in time to give recognition to Nate Dangerhill, who co-produced a lot of Timbaland's tracks around this time. Definitely want to give him credit and his flowers. He also co-wrote songs as well. But Timbaland went from producing a monster album like Loose to another monster album in Justin Timberlake's sophomore album, Future Sex Love Sounds. This was released in September of 2006, topping the Billboard 200, selling 684,000 copies in its first week. Future Sex Love Sounds went quadruple platinum in 2008. 
Timbaland primarily produced this album as well. The two really wanted to build on what they did with Justin's song, Cry Me A River. By 2006, four years after his debut album, Justin Timberlake felt like he was finally ready to drop his sophomore effort. Justin and Timberland locked in and created the magnificent work that is Future Sex Love Sounds. The album was led by the single Sexy Back. This song was huge, with it topping the Billboard Hot 100 for seven weeks. The song has gone triple platinum since. Sexy Back also landed Timbaland his first Grammy win with the song winning the category for Best Dance Recording. This wouldn't be the only song that went number one for the album though. My Love did the same with it going number one for three weeks. What Goes Around Comes Around also went number one as well for just a week. Summer Love peaked at number six on the Billboard Hot 100, Love Stoned peaked at number 17 on the Billboard Hot 100, and Until the End of Time also peaked at the same position. Until the End of Time is definitely one of my favorite Justin Timberlake songs. The version with Beyonce is timeless. Within a year, Timberland was back from having a rough few years in 2004 and 2005. He couldn't stay off the charts in 2006 and ended the year with a bang by producing and performing on Omarion's hit single, Icebox. The song peaked at number 12 on the Billboard Hot 100. Tim kept this momentum going in 2007 when he dropped his quote unquote sophomore album, Shock Value. As I explained earlier, his debut album is really a compilation album of sorts, but Shock Value is his first real album. It was released in April of 2007, peaking at number five on the Billboard 200, selling 138,000 copies in its first week. Shock Value was led by the single Give It To Me, which topped the Billboard High 100 for two weeks. It's now triple platinum. What some people might not know is that this is actually a diss song, which Nelly confirmed. Timberland went at Scott Storch, Justin Timberlake allegedly took shots at Prince, and it's rumored that Nelly took shots at Fergie. But there was a ton of controversy that came from this song. Less controversy surrounded the second single, which was The Way I Are. This song peaked at number three on the Billboard Hot 100. It's triple platinum as of 2013. That song brings me so much nostalgia. Apologize was the next single and that peaked at number two on the Billboard Hot 100. The song was sung by Ryan Tedder of the band One Republic. Ryan had known Tim for several years before the track ever came out. One Republic blew up on MySpace with the original version of Apologize. Throughout the years, Timbaland kept tabs on Ryan and when One Republic blew up, he told Ryan that the song was a hit without his production, but with him, the song could be even bigger. He was correct because like I said, the song ended up being number two on the charts. Shock Value was a huge success and Tim produced a few more hits this year. Rehab by Rihanna was one of them and that ended up peaking at number 18 on the Billboard Hot 100. Outside of songs from his debut album this year, the biggest song he produced and appeared on was 50 Cent's song, Ayo Technology. Hands down, this is my favorite beat and song that Timbaland has ever done. She won't sit. What Timbaland did on this track, I can't even describe in words. Ayo Technology peaked at number 5 on the Billboard Hot 100. The song is now double platinum. The beat was initially for just Justin Timberlake, but 50 Cent got a hold of it and used it as a single for his album, Curtis. Justin still appeared on the hook though, but now it's 2008 and Timbaland had a few hits this year. Elevator by Flo Rida is one of them, which peaked at number 16 on the Billboard Hot 100. Another one was Make Me Better by Fabulous, which peaked at number 8 on the same chart. The big thing that Timbaland did this year was work with Madonna. He produced multiple songs for her 2008 album, Hard Candy, alongside Justin Timberlake. The song Four Minutes was one of them, with that peaking at number 3 on the Billboard Hot 100. It went double platinum in 2008. In 2009, Timbaland released Shock Value 2 at the end of the year. This album did worse than the first one with Shock Value 2 peaking at number 36 on the Billboard 200, selling nearly 38,000 copies in its first week. 
The lead single, Morning After Dark, did not do so hot, but the second single, Say Something, did way better. Say Something peaked at number 23 on the Billboard How 100. The biggest hit from Shock Value 2 happened to be Justin Timberlake and Timberland teaming back up once again to make the song carry out. This peaked at number 11 on the Billboard Hot 100. This song is also double platinum. Outside of Tim's album Shock Value 2, he didn't really produce any hits that year, but he did produce songs for artists such as Carrie Hilson, who was also on his label, Shakira, Jay-Z, Birdman, Wyclef John, etc. In 2010, from what I've seen, Timbaland did not do much producing this year. One of the only notable things that he did produce was for Drake's debut album, Thank Me Later. Timbaland produced one song for the album, and that was Thank Me Now. In 2011, Tim produced a little more, but no notable hits to mention. The same thing goes for 2012. At this point, it was like a pattern for Tim. He was really hot and productive for a time, and then he took a back seat. But right on cue, Timberland ended up having a huge 2013, starting with Justin Timberlake's third album, The 2020 Experience. Timberland has production credits and songwriter credits throughout the album. The 2020 Experience album topped the Billboard 200, selling 968,000 copies in its first week, which is absolutely insane. There was a lot of hype going into the album because it had been seven years since Justin's last album, Future Sex Love Sounds, in 2006. He took a break from music for the same reasons he did the first time after the release of his debut album, Justified, in 2002. The 2020 Experience album was led by the single Suit and Tie, which peaked at number three on the Billboard Hot 100 and went double platinum the same year it released. Mirrors was the second single from the album, and this peaked at number two on the Billboard Hot 100. This also went double platinum in 2013. Timbaland kept the momentum going in 2013 by primarily producing Jay-Z's 12th album, Magna Carta, Holy Grail. This album also topped the Billboard 200 charts, selling 528,000 copies in its first week. Holy Grail became the album's first single. This peaked at number four on the Billboard Hot 100. Tom Ford was the next single with the song peaking at number 39 on the same chart. At the tail end of 2013, Timbaland did production for Jay-Z's wife Beyonce on her self-titled fifth album. Timbaland has production credits on four songs on the album with the two most notable ones being Partition and Drunk in Love. Drunk in Love peaked at number two on the Billboard Hot 100 while Partition topped out at number 23. By this time, at the end of 2013, Tim had been in the game for over 20 years, known by the masses for over 15. He put in a lot of work and he had a lot of hits to show for it. 2013 was his last big year. Of course, since 2013, he's never stopped producing, but the hits weren't back to back to back like how they were when he was in his prime, and that's more than okay. After 2013, he did things like work on Michael Jackson's posthumous album Escape, which was released in 2014. He reunited with Devontae Swing and Jodeci for their comeback album The Past, The Present, The Future in 2015. He was working with up-and-coming artists at the time like Bryson Tiller and Tink, to name a few. He also got back in the studio with Justin Timberlake for his fifth album, Man of the Woods, which spawned two hit singles that Timberland had production credits on. Those being Filthy, which peaked at number nine on the Billboard Hot 100, and Say Something, which charted at that same position. Timbaland also did production for Kanye's album Jesus is King in 2019. He has production credits on songs like Closed on Sunday, Use This Gospel, Jesus is Lord, etc. Timbaland's last notable hit song to this day is J. Cole's song Amari, which was released in 2021 for J. Cole's album The Off Season. Timbaland has production credits on the song with their peaking at number 5 on the Billboard Hot 100. Plotting my escape, this game riding niggas fake, got a couple M's hiding in the safe, imagination turn a Honda in a rave. Of course, I can't end the video and not mention how Timbaland created verses alongside Swizz Beats in 2020. 
it's essentially a live battle to see who has the better catalog between two people or group versus group. This gave us classic battles like Dipset versus The Locks, Beanie Man versus Bounty Killer, The Isley Brothers versus Earth, Wind & Fire, etc. Timbaland really came from nothing and worked endlessly to get his music heard by people throughout the world. A legacy is an important thing to leave behind and that's exactly what he did. When people are discussing who's the best producer of all time, at least in the rap hip hop space in particular, Timbaland's name needs a definite mention. The longevity he had is really impressive and the body of work he had, especially in his prime, is second to none. I personally feel like out of all the producers that people bring up in the argument, I feel like Timbaland is in a class of few that had a really futuristic and different beats. Not only that, but he took risks and did things that other producers would never think of doing. I mean, listen to his production on songs like Pony, Are You That Somebody, and Dirt Off Your Shoulder. Like who thinks of having this burping-like sound in a song and baby noises throughout a track? Some of his more futuristic beats are songs like The Way I Are, AO Technology, Ugly, Bounce, and Try Again. If these beats came out today, it wouldn't even sound dated. Then Timberland has songs that are amazing but never became hits. Chop Me Up by Justin Timberlake, Indian Flute with Magoo, Put You on the Game by The Game, Drop with Magoo, Hey Poppy by Jay-Z, and The Potion by Ludacris are some examples. Timbaland is a musical genius and always has been. One of my favorite Timbaland stories is told by Kanye West, who talked about how he was competing with Timbaland with his production. Kanye felt like the production on Sexy Back was amazing, while he felt like his single Stronger sounded muddy when it was played in a club. Kanye tried to reach out to producers like Swizz Beats and Pharrell to help him with the drums, but it did not work. Finally, Kanye went to Timbaland to do the drums on the song and he completed it in five minutes. Kanye took forever to do the final mix of the song because he could not get it to his liking. If you know, you know. Timbaland did it in five minutes and spent the rest of the time telling Kanye that no one else could have done it but him. The studio session is online if you would like to know more about it. Busta Rhymes has even talked about people witnessing Tim making beats out of plastic cups and pencils. Just pure insanity. Even now, I believe Timbaland still has the ability to make a number one record, let alone another hit. Those abilities just don't leave you, especially for a producer of Timbaland's caliber. Not to mention his songwriting abilities as well. Before closing out the video, I do want to give credit to people who co-produced tracks with Timbaland because their contributions should be acknowledged as well. Earlier I mentioned Danger, but J-Rock aka Jerome Harmon is another person who did a lot of co-production alongside Timbaland. It's really crazy to see how Timbaland escaped death three times and still managed to have the career that he had. Through the dry spells and depression, Timbaland came back stronger and showed why he's one of the greatest producers of all time. All in all, let me know what you guys thought of the video in the comment section below. I love you guys with all my heart. Peace.